For this ship, I would like to have a a tactical missile carrier ship with a large fuel capacity. Something like the Yars, but without the weapons and much more fuel uh, range. So let's see what we can do. Okay, I'm going to plan for four missiles. Now, I have a slight dilemma over here. The R3 in the campaign, it only appears after you take Kiva. However, it's available in the ship editor without any cheating or editing of files, so it wouldn't be exp an exploit if I use it right now. So that's what I'm going to do. Oh, I can't rearm them in the campaign. Once I shoot them, I have to use the other missiles. Okay, now let's see. I'll attach large fuel tanks right away. Now, fuel tanks, they don't conduct any power lines, so I have to use some hull parts around it. All right, this one has to go here. Okay, let's see what we can do with regular thrusters. Okay, 3,700, yeah, that... <clears throat> I would like to have 5,000. So what do I need? I need... I need power, yeah. See if a small generator is enough. Oh, this one isn't connected because of the... How much power do I actually need? It's really weird. They, they say they need power. Well, it doesn't say here that you need power. I'm going to put it up here. Power generator up here. <clears throat> I would like to have higher fuel capacity, about 5 6 thousand. Let's see if I can do something with the spare tanks. Now, it's interesting if you remove one missile, look at this. I'm getting 500 fuel uh, efficiency back. So those missiles are relatively heavy. But it, it's the same for all missiles. Now, I'm not so much concerned about the, the speed on the main map. Because if you, if you consider this game like a, like a naval game, in some ways it's a naval simulation, except that the ships are flying, not swimming. Then this will be a submarine with uh, tactical cruise missiles. <clears throat> A cruise missile is actually tactical. I think a strategic missile, I read the definition, it, it's uh, from one theater of war into another, which means if you shoot it from another continent outside of the theater of combat. A tactical missile is fired within the same theater at a target in the same theater. Okay. <clears throat> I need extra fuel efficiency. Now, one weird thing I figured out is if you add some of the static thrusters, you actually get some fuel capacity added to it. I'm going to demonstrate here. Take the static one. Notice here, my fuel capacity actually increases, which means that thing appears to have an internal tank, or I am having some, or I'm doing some really weird miscalculation in my head right now. Hmm. I'm not sure if that's a bug or some something I'm, I'm forgetting here. I should add more fuel capacity to this. See if I can push it higher. But the ship doesn't need any weapon systems. It's purely meant as some type of submarine. It moves into position, and once the targets are identified, shoot the missiles and get away. That's why I need a high fuel efficiency, so it can go really far out from the main fleet and come back if I have to. Hmm. Now it says low thrust because the master ship is too heavy for the two thrusters to carry it. Well, let me check. How many squares do I have here? Okay, one, two.
I have 11 in length, which means I have this one central space. It should be here, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going to put one central static thruster in here. Four thousand nine hundred. I mean, what happens if I, rem I don't like that thing sticking out? If what if I remove one missile? Let's see what happens. I mean, I could reduce the firepower of the ship to three missiles. That's good enough because that's kind of dilemma. If you just fire one or two missiles on hard difficulty, the first one is likely not even getting through to the target because of anti-aircraft fire and missiles. If you got two missiles, and the second one might get through if you fire them in a volley. But three, number three and four, they tend to get through most of the time because, at this point, the anti-aircraft capabilities are expanded. So I think three is a good option here, and the ship is relatively, uh, relatively cheap because uh, I think ninety percent of the ship cost is just the missiles. Let's remove that. Yeah, that looks much nicer. And I still got some fuel space over here. Hmm, 5,700. Oh, I need some connection over here. Not sure if that will block the thruster. It does actually block the thruster, and it will actually um, decrease the total thrust you're getting. I watch the numbers up here in the corner. Here's I'm removing it, it actually, if you block the the, the cone, it will it reduce it. <clears throat> so I still need a connection to this part. Hmm. What I could do is, wait, if, if I fill up the thrust over here, then the thing gets some depth. I'll try that. Nah, that, that thing is in the way, otherwise it would work. So what I could do here is... I need to surround it in hull pieces for it to get, get um, depth. Or I could just leave that part out and put a trail of hull pieces over here. I think that would work. I'm going to add some corner pieces for aesthetics. Okay, now they appear not to be get blocked by anything. Wait a minute, let me check that. Now I can't reach it right now. And uh, still have to consider the landing game. Yeah, 6,000 range looks good. Also, consumption is actually an important thing to remember because fuel costs money. And especially on hard, they usually have to choose between having missiles to shoot, having planes, and having enough fuel. And I think that's what usually ruins me in the main campaign. The, I can't have all of that. Okay, so. <clears throat> landing gear. Now, technically, I could skip the landing gear. However, for realism purposes, I want the ship to be complete. I also don't want to skip on the evac part. Okay, let's see landing gear. We should put it up here. I could put it on below the ship. Yep, make it, it should have some aesthetics to it. Check it for the same angle. Okay, like this. Yeah, I like this. It has a certain elegance to it. I think it gives a, give a slight angle to the to the feet of the landing gear because it gives it some spring. Yeah, I like this one. I think I'm. Yeah, that that looks really nice. I'm going to save it. I'm going to call it the crocodile. it has a long elongated profile and its goal is to attack enemy ships at their watering holes. That's also a thing if you use the R3 missiles. I'm not sure if they change it in a new patch, but when I first tested them in the video, I think a month ago, they're really bad at tracking flying targets. I think it's impossible to hit flying targets with them, so you have to hit lander targets. However, they are really fast 
They think the fastest object in this game. So they have a much easier time getting through anti-aircraft fire. Okay, so <clears throat> I got the landing gear. I need a bit more power. I need back parts, so let's improvise with that. I'd also like to have one extra thing for fire suppression. Oh, we can put on, we can put on two. Just in case they get hit by a missile, I can at least put a fire out. Yeah, this looks like a good ship. I'm not going to do any combat testing because that thing is not supposed to be in combat. Okay, let's see how the thing lands. You see here I got the owl, which I designed yesterday. And I designed those two things in, in to be used as a package together. The owl is like a recon plane carrier. It's only supposed to go really far out, spot targets for the missile cruisers, and then fly back. Uh, where's the crocodile? Ah, look how beautiful it looks here, another icon. <laughs> Okay, let's see how she lands. Yeah, I'm really proud of the shape. It looks just elegant. Look at it. Okay, it's quite balanced. Because sometimes some components are heavier than others, so you have a really heavy tilt on one side when you're landing. It has a tilt to the left side, but it's still manageable, I think. I think it was fun to land. So I think this completes the ship. I'm really proud of how it visually looks out. I really like it. It has its ele elegant, balanced, slightly asymmetrical shape. How the main thruster, the static one, is integrated into the main shape. Now my expectation for this ship is to, early in the campaign, sneak far out from the main fleet. And a few thousand kilometers ahead of the main fleet, identify the strike groups and the tactic groups and hit them with precise strikes, and then retreat back, rearm, and repeat it. So it's kind of first strike capability, in case of <clears throat> not just reacting to the enemy strike groups coming at me, but finding them before they even start moving towards me. So I think this concludes this one, and as always, uh, thanks for watching.